Good morning, true crime friends. We're back together again, and it's Friday Eve. Wait, is today Wednesday or today Thursday? <gasps> Today is Thursday. That means tomorrow's Friday. I love a Thursday. Like, just the anticipation. It's like Christmas Eve. I don't know. I love it. Anyway, so look, there is so much true crime happening right now. There's so much happening in the true crime world. But first, we need to go down to South Carolina. Little up. Jim Griffin, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Dick Harpootlian, Will Folks. There's a lot happening down there in South Carolina. But you know what's really, really going on in my mind? I'm a little sick of them. Like, you're a little sick of them? I'm a little bit sick of them. I just feel like it's the same story over and over and over. Um, Because, like, yes, Dick Harpootlian is crooked and weird and whatever. Um, Jim Griffin, his trusty sidekick, like, okay, whatever. Fitz News, first in the South. Yeah, they still down there. Listen, I was talking about this last night. Behind the scenes on the member spaces. Um... Will Folks' kids said I have Riz. Now, apparently, first of all, I had to Google what Riz was. Riz is charisma. Yay! Yay me! Will Folks' kids like me? Will Folks, why are your kids watching this channel? Will, Will and Mrs. Will Folks? I need to find out her name because nobody should be called Mrs. Will Folks. Honestly, nobody should be called Mrs. their husband's name because, like, this is not 1932. Anyway, I saw pictures of her and her kids. They have some real cute kids. That I am chalking that up solely to Will's wife, Mrs. Folks, whatever her real name is. Let's give her a name. We're going to call her Sally. Hey, Sally girl, how you doing? Why you marry that man? He must be quite charming. I don't, I do not get the appeal, but those kids are real cute. Is Will the real daddy? Okay, I'm just, you don't have to, I'm. I'm not speculating or anything like that. Maybe it was some genetic materials that were donated or whatever. Those are some real cute kids. Anyway, enough about South Carolina. Um, also, who married Dick Harpootlian? I just, I, I, I have to know. This is a burning question for me. Who looked at Dick Harpootlian and was like, I will take that, please. And you know, he seems like the type of dude who's had five wives. I'm not saying he's had five wives. He just has, he has like five wife energy. You know what I mean? Mrs. Folks, you got second wife energy. I, no shade. Now, I'm not nobody's second wife, but I'm just saying she got second. She's young. She's pretty. She seems smart enough, although I'm really questioning her decision to wear to marry well. Okay, look, this is, I, I said I was not going to talk about South Carolina, and now here I am stuck talking about South Carolina. Hey, South Carolina, I see all y'all, um, and a lot of you are on this channel, and I, when the Murdoch trial was going on, I made a comment that once the Murdoch trial was over, that I would wash South Carolina out of my brain and forget about all of you. And some of y'all were very upset by that. I hope you didn't take that personally because whenever I cover a case, I do a deep dive on that space. And then I can't remember the name of the city, the names of the people, the names of anything. It all goes away. Except for these mama looks down in South Carolina, but child, they know how to stay in the news. They just keep coming back up and coming back up and coming back up. We can't get rid of them. They like a, a like a bad itch or something like that. I don't I don't know. Okay, South Carolina, I'm going to stop talking about you because there's a lot of stuff going on in the news. But also, can somebody please tell me who looked at Dick Harpootlian and said, yes, I would like to marry him and see him in a bathing suit or less? Ew. Maybe it was a long time ago when he was young. I don't, I cannot figure it out. Anyway, this escaped fugitive out of Pennsylvania, he got captured. I have not followed that case like very intently. I just saw him like crab walk up that wall, which I thought was fascinating. And I saw they were searching for him and I was like, okay, good luck. And so now they've captured him. You know how when hunters get like a deer and they have like the bloody deer and they're all pictured around it. That's what they did with this dude. Yes, he killed somebody, but y'all, he's still a human being. I don't, I don't, are you supposed to take trophy pictures with the bloody? Was he still alive? I'm not even sure if the man was still alive. All I know is like a bloody human laying there and a whole bunch of police officers around them. Y'all look crazy to me. Now, listen, I'm not in the shooting things business unless absolutely necessary. Don't come over here testing me because y'all going to find out. But um, I just... That picture seemed in poor taste to me, but I had not breathlessly followed that search. Maybe people are feeling like, yay, we did it, whatever. And I'm glad that you captured that murderous Mama Luke. His whole family sounded crazy. His mama gave an interview that captured dude, Daniel, Daniello, whatever his name is. I'm not even sure of his full name. His mother gave an interview that said, um, he didn't want to kill his girlfriend. He had to kill her. What? What? 
Um, because she was going to tell the police or I, she was going to tell some sort of officials that he was wanted for another crime. So he had to kill her mom. Stop helping. Mm -mm. We, we, mm -mm. Also, I'm looking at you real hard, mama. Like, that's how you raised your child. He had, he didn't have to kill nobody. He could have like not committed the first crime and then not committed those subsequent crimes. And, and she said it would be better for him to no longer be alive than to go back to jail. Do we have eyes on mama? Is she locked up? I'm just, she real slick with the mouth. I, mm -mm. Was she was she talking from this country? Was she talking from someplace else? Was she commuting in from outer space? I don't know. This mother was odd. And the fact that they put all of this on the news and then the sister, when he committed his last crime, possibly also this one, his sister helped him out and then got arrested. Like, this whole family, like, all y'all can go away, go far away to prison, to another. I don't even think you should be deported to another country because we don't want to put those people in the other country in danger. Like, I don't, is Guantanamo available? I don't, mm-mm. That whole family is, I have the serious ick when it comes to them. I'm glad the boy was captured. I believe he was captured alive. I think if they had like shot him all up full of holes, somebody would have said that. But y'all, I don't know. That, that case was not for me. In other news, because there is so much news. Shirley Strawberry. Now look, there is basically a new Shirley Strawberry tape every day at this point. Um, her phone calls from prison, that is an entire YouTube channel dedicated to phone calls from prison. Okay, make your money, boo-boo. And here's the thing. Steve Harvey went on his show and he was like, we're going to put this to bed once and for all. Are you, Steve? Do you have the power to put something to bed once and for all? My guess is no. And here's why. Steve Harvey is like, okay, we're going to have Shirley come on here and tell her whole story. And Shirley was like, okay, my estranged husband and I, I was like, oh, y'all are strange now. Oh, please tell me everything. Cause I'm nosy like that. She was like, my estranged husband and I, he did terrible things and now I'm divorcing him and I've lost a bunch of money. But most importantly, I talked bad about Steve and it was caught on tape. Ma'am, that is not why we were listening to these calls. Not at all. And she was like, Steve, 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 Steve. Oh, it was all about Steve. Okay, Steve Harvey, I see how you roll it. No shade, because go on and make your money and do your radio show and do whatever you're going to do. But it's interesting to me that Shirley's situation, all her business has been out here for months months it was only when steve harvey's name got brought into it oh now we got to be on the show okay so all y'all over here kissing steve's feet now we see why marjorie che treats you like the help because y'all acting like the help just my personal opinion but um steve was like i'm sure some guard down there in fulton county needed the money and released these tapes steve sir that's not how this works it's called FOIA, freedom of information act and people in the know already know those jail calls that get recorded, you could just go online and request them. You send these people their money, the state, the county, whoever, and they will send you all the tapes you want. And so Steve and Shirley addressed the situation on Monday morning. They were like, okay, that's it. It's over now. Since that's happened, at least two other brand new jail call channels have popped up with more Shirley Strawberry calls. A couple of them that I saw are just exclusively doing Shirley Strawberry calls. Y'all are job creators. Like, honestly, Steve is like, we are a legitimate platform and all these other bloggers, blah, blah, blah. Sir, who's listening to terrestrial radio? I, for the life of me, I did not realize that people listen to the radio in their cars or on their phones or whatever. I have not, this car I've had for six years, I think, I had literally never used the radio in six years because I had my phone. I could just listen to podcasts and whatever. Why would I just take my chances, listen to five zillion commercials when I could just put on a podcast and listen to exactly what I want to listen to? See also YouTube. I have not watched. I have cable. I have all the channels. I have all the streaming services. We have all the everything, but um, mostly I watch YouTube because then I can go to exactly what I want to watch. I can speed it up. I can slow it down. I can skip through it. I can press the button and skip the commercial. Like Steve is like, we're a legitimate platform and, and those other things are not. Sir, now listen, them other things, they might not have Steve Harvey money, but it's a lot of people on the come up off the back of new media. So uh, you should maybe inform yourself. Nobody is leaking calls, Shirley leaking her mouth, her estranged husband leaking his mouth. And I'm like, mm-hmm, 
What else happened? Please tell me everything. Here's the thing I found out from a new batch of calls yesterday. Um, props to my girl, Chronicle Speaks. If you want to know all of the gossip related to Shirley Strawberry, phone calls from jail. So you can just listen to the phone calls on your very own. And Chronicle Speaks, Chronicle been bringing us the tea since forever. Forever. I love Chronicle Speaks. I'm subscribed to the channel. I stay perched when she drops something new. I am all about Miss Chronicle, according to Chronicle Speaks. Now, you ain't heard this from me. You heard it from Chronicle Speaks. She said that, um, number one, Shirley Strawberry, yes, she had a house in LA and she's had it since the early aughts. She sold that house in one of these quickie sales. You know, the people who call and they're like, mm -hmm, we'll give you 35 cents for your house. And she, uh, Shirley was like, okay, here, I'll take my 35 cents. And she took whatever little bit of money. And then the person who bought the house fixed it up and sold it for a whole lot more money. So to me, that means Miss Shirley needed money fast. She walked away from a very nice asset um, because the other people sold the house for a lot of money. Miss Shirley, girl, you left money on the table. You needed money quick like that. What'd you use that money for? To support your crooked behind husband? Okay. So Miss Shirley been making bad financial decisions for a minute. Additionally, Ernesto Williams, Ernest Williams, Shirley's now estranged husband, was married to somebody else. And apparently he never fully divorced. Well, he never divorced that first wife. And so his marriage to Shirley might not even be legal. You've lost everything, everything, every single thing, your money, Part of your sanity, your housing, your car, and your financial future, now that you are 69, over a man who was not your legal husband, or allegedly, possibly, not your legal husband, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes only, what? Girl, you are out here looking crazy, crazy. I honestly hope that Miss Shirley, who clearly is one of this man's victims, is able to recoup something because right now she's looking nuts. And Ernest Williams' partner in crime, his co-defendant or whatever, she used to be a preacher. I saw some of the footage of her being a preacher and I was like, oh, hey, shady lady, because she looks shady as anything. I'm just like, hmm. And she used to be like thin and beautiful with the hair and the makeup and the whatever and in the jail phone calls and in the jail footage she was looking a mess like she even looked shorter than she had been before her face looks real puffy her hair she, she had that good wig on i was like mm. she's looking toe up from the flow up like chow you are looking a mess. So um, she's had a lot of careers, a lot of careers. Some of them were actual legitimate careers. But then I found out more information about the time she tried to be a lawyer. Now listen, call me crazy. I thought she just walked herself in the jailhouse and was like, yes, I'm his lawyer. No, she pretended to be a Zoom lawyer. You know how now they do all these court cases on Zoom. So it's just like all the little boxes with the people's names. This woman got the login information and she logged on and she put her name as like some lawyer. And so they were like, oh, hey, ma'am. And they were like, wait, we know that lawyer. You you don't look like that lawyer. And so they were like, ma'am, uh, what's your bar number? Because everybody, if somebody else opens up a channel and calls it gossip rumor and innuendo, but innuendo is spelled wrong and it's not me, you would be like, you do not look like regular Kathy from GRI. Who are you? Mathy from GRE. I don't know how they would do it, but you know what I'm saying. If it's like a fake version of me, you'll be like, mm -mm, mm -mm. does that person have a bra on? Obviously, then that's not Kathy from GRI because Kathy from GRI don't roll like that. She's with that no foundation garment life. And so um, Miss Erica, the shady lawyer, rolled up on the Zoom call, pretended to be another lawyer, and they kept asking her for her bar number. She's like, oh, hang on, let me look it up. And she gave them the bar number and she gave the wrong number. They were like, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. And so she was like, oh, I'm having trouble. I think I got disconnected. Bloop, she disconnected herself, right? She logged back on and accidentally logged on with her real name. And they were like, oh, look at this, Mama Luke, Miss uh, Erica King. Okay, so might go and arrest her. And then that's how she got arrested. Um, ma'am, you are not good at crime. You, you have been arrested for stuff before. Now you pretended to be, as a, why don't I just show up and be a Zoom lawyer? Mm-hmm, I'm a lawyer. I'd like to get my client out of jail. What? 
And then his side chick, who is on many, many, many phone calls, is apparently a paralegal from Florida. So she's all in the computer and looking stuff up and doing research on the case. Girl, what would your life be if you dedicated yourself and put all this time and energy into something that was going to move your life forward instead of an obvious con man? And we know Shirley has dumped him. Has the side chick dumped him too? Because listen, I know in some cases these side chicks be like, oh yeah, I wish you was free so you could be my main boo thing. And then when the dude gets free, she's like, mm -mm, and me and your wife was a package deal. I, I see how you do women. Nah, nah, nah. I was just here for your money or your charm or your loving or whatever it is. Now you're going to have to go. In my opinion, I do not approve of side chicks. But if you're going to be a smart side chick, at least be a smart one. If the wife go, you got to go too. You don't want that because you already know he a dude who cheats. You're like, mm-mm. That's just everybody changing chairs. You move into the wife chair, somebody else move into the side chick chair. Don't do it to yourself, sis. Don't do it to yourself. Look, wait, let me look at my notes. What the? <gasps> In other news. You know this eight passengers lady, right? Frankie, Ruby Frankie, who like abused her kids and she had a whole YouTube channel about her abusing her kids. I mean, she called it parenting, but I called it abuse. Now, listen, I've been following this case and I think what this woman did to her children are terrible. Here's the thing. From the time I saw her, I was like, who does she look like? Who does she look like? You know who she looks like? She looks like former Real Housewives of, what housewives was she on? I think she was on, I'm not, it was one of the California housewives. I'm not sure if it's Beverly Hills or if it was Orange County, but she looks like, no, it was Orange County. That eight passengers lady looks like Megan King Edmonds to me. Now look, I saw the jail picture and I was like, Megan, King's Edmund, Megan King Edmonds is going to jail? Megan King got eight kids? Where'd she get eight kids? Oh, they just look alike. So, um, as part of the ongoing series of the Real Housewives of San Quentin or wherever, they could have that Frankie lady, Ruby Frankie. They could have um, the lady from Salt Lake City, Jen. They could have Teresa Giudice. Um, if you're already committing crimes, what in your brain says, you know what? I would like to put my criminal self on TV. Is it just your ego? You think you're not going to get caught? Like, hmm breaking a bunch of laws, cheating and robbing people. You know what else I need? You know what's going to make this perfect? Going on national TV so more strangers from all over the world on the internet can dig into my life. Ladies, it's a bad look. Just a note for anybody who is thinking about going on reality TV. If you're committing crime, don't do it. It's it's not going to go good for you. Listen, the world is filled with internet sleuths. Me among them. I mean, I don't really sleuth things. I basically look at other sleuths content and say, ooh, child, and then report on it breathlessly. I'm just like, some of y'all not that smart. I have a feeling that there's a lot of criminals in the world. Obviously not everybody is a criminal, but there's a lot of criminals in the world, but only the dumb ones are getting caught. There gotta be some smart ones doing stuff we don't even know nothing about. Or they're doing things that we're like, thank you so much for doing that thing you did. We don't even know that they're doing terrible things because they're smart about it. If you're going to be a criminal, at least be a smart criminal. Like, dumb criminals. Now, listen, dumb criminals are why I'm in business. They just keep me all in business, and I'm here for it. But I'm just like, mm, dumb criminals, continue, stay stupid. In the words of the great philosopher Patrick, Patrick Hines from Obsessed with whatever he's on. Oh, the Obsessed Network, the True Crime Network. Stay stupid, because... It gives me all the content in the world. Last but certainly not least, over there in Massachusetts, this Kara Rintala case. Oh, I love the accents over there. I wish I could do like a Massachusetts accent. In my opinion, all these people sound like they're from New Hampshire, but um, they're from Massachusetts. And the opening statements by both the prosecution and the defense, I was perched, perched. This woman is going up for murder. It's her fourth time on trial for the same thing. Most of those times she was convicted. I think several times there was a hung jury and then a couple times she was convicted and now the case has been overturned and it's going back because there was a problem with the expert, whatever. I have followed this case for years. I watched the Dateline. I watched all the episodes that they did about it, mostly for the accents because I'm living for those Massachusetts accents and not just like a Boston accent, like a deep, deep Massachusetts accent. This is a lesbian couple who got married and it was like a serious domestic violence situation. Look, this is my issue with this case. In my opinion, the accused is guilty 
or the accused, there's enough evidence to find her guilty, in my lowly opinion. But um, there's enough other like circumstantial stuff that maybe not. So her wife got unalived, however it happened, I don't know. And then paint was thrown all over the situation. And then the accused scooted herself under the body of the decedent and was like, I love her so much, covering herself with paint. And then she covered her partner with paint. Here's the thing about this case that gives me pause. Long before this was a murder case, this was a domestic violence case over and over and over and over again. If this were not a same-sex couple, right? If there were not two women, if this was a man and a woman and a man had had many restraining orders, there was all this domestic violence. He was getting kicked out of the house. He was back and forth. And then the day, the day before this murder, the judge had decided, oh, y'all just go back in there and work it out. And then one of them ends up dead. You would immediately be like, that man killed his wife because he wanted whatever. He wanted the house. He wanted the baby. He didn't want to pay child support, whatever it is. So many people would just be like, why is this even going to court? So I'm looking at this case, gender aside, because I don't think, I don't think domestic violence has anything to do with gender. I think it has to do with that individual person. Gender aside, I think this lady killed her partner. I think she strangled her, threw her down the stairs and threw a bunch of paint on top of her. But the state has to prove that. Me thinking it does not mean a doggone thing. Me being like, mm, she guilty of sin. Don't mean a thing. The real question is what can be proved? And I guess we are going to find out what can be proved. Oh, wait. The bonked her mama in the head. Murder case. Look. A, a psychologist testified yesterday and was like, Sydney was profoundly compromised, blah, blah, blah. And so I believe him to some degree. Here's where I'm getting stuck, right? He was like, Sydney was out of her mind. Yes, I believe that's true. Sydney, this entire crime took place in the space of three minutes. She was there, she was fine, and then she just like, you know, lost it all, and she committed this crime. Okay, here's the part that I'm really, really getting hung up on. Miss Sydney, who was out of her mind and couldn't together, couldn't put together a coherent thought, was coherent enough to bonk her mama on the head right at the moment that the mother was about to find out the truth of what happened. That seemed kind of organized to me, right? She didn't bonk her mama after. She didn't bonk her mama when she first got home. She bonked her mama right at the time that her mother was going to find out her secret. And then she had the consciousness to go and break out a window and pretend like somebody else did it. Now, it's clear that she was dealing with stress poorly. Now, having just killed your mother, then that would stress me out. That might cause me to have like more of a psychotic break or whatever. I think she was dancing right there on the edge of sanity and sanity. And this her her consciously killing her mother pushed her over the edge. This is my opinion. I am not an expert by any means. And the dude that they had on the stand yesterday is a sports psychologist. Hmm. Um, yes, he's renowned. Good for him. Why is a sports psychologist? And he like kept giving all these, these um, examples related to athletes. Sir, we're not here to talk about sports ball or the running or the jumping or the whatever else. I don't, He's renowned, but he's a renowned sports psychologist. I don't, he could tell me how many calories Sydney Burns stabbing her mama. Like, but I don't, I don't get this dude. So um, I personally think that Miss Sydney, who bonked her mom on the head, I think she's going to be convicted. And the family was like, why did they even let this come to court? She's clearly mentally compromised. Yes, that happens a lot. Lots of people are mentally compromised. But you know what happens? They say, yes, I was mentally compromised. And now I will take my punishment and go off to the nervous hospital for however many years. The problem I have with Sydney's family is not that they're supporting her. I think they should support her, but I think they should have supported her in pleading guilty and taking her punishment. They're like, yes, she did this terrible thing. Yes, she murdered her mother. She should be allowed to go live on a nice, peaceful horse farm with some dogs. No, that's not how that works. I think, is she in GI? Yeah, probably. But it's not like, oh, she's not guilty because she was insane. She's guilty and she was insane. And she should go serve her time for the crime that she committed. This family, like, I'm with y'all family, but they're like, oh, we just go send her to live at grandma's house. I said it earlier this week. I will say it again. Grandma, you not safe. 
Them horses are not safe. Them dogs are not safe. The puppies and the kitties. Child, you might as well live in South Carolina because they just do whatever the puppies and kitties down there. And people are like, oh, we just call it buggery and keep on moving. Like, mm-mm. Miss Sydney need to go to jail. For, like, for the criminally insane. And will that be bad for her mental health? Yes. It was bad for her mama's physical health to get stabbed in the knife, stabbed in the neck 30 times with a steak knife and bonked on the head with an iron skillet. That case is also interesting. We will see how it all works out. I do not know. Listen, you know I need to get on with the rest of my day. But this episode is dedicated to two of our fine, fine members, Jaded Wonder and Kathy B. Thank you, Jaded Wonder and Kathy B for being members of this mess that I call a true crime channel. If you decide to become a member, that will be great. We'd love to see you over in the back room. So if you remember, what happens is some videos you get early when I have the remembrance to upload them early, but also you get morning gossip just like this, which is free. You get lunchtime true crime, also free, but then you also get more me, which I understand. A, a little of me goes a really long way, but you do get bedtime check-ins and unfiltered personal up close, sometimes alive. We just have a little chitty chitty chat chat every night before we go to bed. And on the weekends and on the days that I don't post on the free side, I always post on the member side. So if you want more of this true crime madness, click the join button and become a member or for free, 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 you can just play bingo. And if you win a bingo, you get a prize. The bingo cards are usually a pinned comment at the top of each one of these posts. So click around, find yourself a bingo card. And if your old bingo card isn't working for you, you could go and refresh and get yourself a new bingo card. There are 30 different bingo cards available and I have prizes. Oh wait, also these came in the other day. I have these mailers. Let me see if I can get one out. Look, my gossip rumor and innuendo mailers came in. So if you win, you'll get a prize sent to you, possibly in one of these mailers, depending on what prizes I'm sending that day. So. If you want to bingo, let me know and I'll send you a nice prize. Okay, you guys, get out there, have a great day, and I will see you at lunchtime for Lunchtime True Crime. Bye.